A green paper published by the Department of Home Affairs proposes that women be allowed to marry more than one partner. Now, the green paper aims to work towards the development of a new single marriage bill and will align the country's marriage regime with the constitutional principle of equality. For more on the implications of the paper, I'm joined now by Mr. Sihem Tiani, the Chief Director of Policy at the Department of Home Affairs, as well as Ms. Elizabeth Retief, a member of Polyamory South Africa. A very good afternoon to the both of you, and thank you so much for your time. Let's start with you, uh, Babum Tiani. What is it that necessitated a relook at the Marriages Act, and what aspects of the Marriages Act are going to be under focus and proposed by this green paper. Good afternoon, uh, Tammy, and thank you so much for inviting the Department of Home Affairs to be part of this uh, important engagement. Uh, basically, what we are introducing is a, is a new policy. At the stage, we have it as a green paper which is basically an, an options paper. It's not yet a position of government. There are a few issues that uh, we are trying to address as government. If I can just run through, through those issues, uh, tell me. The first one is to deal with the situation that is faced by women who are involved in marriages that are not recognized by the current marriage legislation. Those are like Hindu marriages, uh, Muslim marriages, and also very important, uh, Tami, it's marriages that involve young, uh, young, young, young persons who are younger than 18 years of age. We are then also dealing with the issues that affect non-binary persons who are involved in, um, uh, in marriages. Some of those marriages are already recognized with the uh, Civil Union Act of 2006. But then the few issues that we are then uh, trying to address, the new uh, marriage uh, legislation will then allow those who are excluded to be recognized, for their marriages to be recognized. So let me bring you in here, Ms. Ratif. What are your thoughts on the propositions that are being for, uh, put forward by Home Affairs as per the Green Paper? Hi. Um, well, firstly, I think it's a very positive change. It's a very positive thing that our government is looking at this and looking at ways, first of all, to protect people who are already in religious marriages that doesn't get the same government protection that they would get, the same legal protection because their marriages aren't recognized. That is a extremely worthy goal. And then the, because it would offer protection to people who are currently in quite a vulnerable position. And then to then extend that further to say that we want to make provision for non-binary people and go to gender equality, that is a fantastic step as well. Um, this bill does not really touch on polyamorous marriages as such, but it is a step in the right direction, I think, because it also brings up the talking point of why should, in some situations, men be allowed to have more than one wife? You know, the equality thing, bringing in equality for women to have the same options. And it also brings up the talking point that monogamy is not the only way to have a stable, long-lasting, loving relationship. Uh, Babum Tiane, during the ministerial dialogues that took place in 2019 and, and 2020, one of the main areas of, of contention and controversy were around issues of, of polygamy and, and, and polyandry uh, with the various ministers. Talk to us about the nature of those discussions and the concerns that were put on the table. Look, uh, yeah, the, basically what you get from traditional leaders, their views are very uh, clear. They say polygamy is for men. Men must have more women. And they, they are very clear on, on that, even not just tra tra traditional leaders, even other um, uh, leaders outside of that, including religious leaders. They said no. In fact, religious leaders, they went as far as saying no to polygamy. That is, a, but not all sectors of, uh, of religious communities, obvious. But the main issue that is, uh, 
of contention here is then how are you going to maintain the, the family uh, tree or as well as the, the, the lineage, family lineage, especially when you're looking at the patriarchal relationships that we, we are so used to as, as a country. The matriarchal relationship is something that is it's still new. It's not practiced in many countries. You find that uh, such practices in countries like China, India, as well as in Kenya and Nigeria. I think the cult community, I must put it generally, to say now you are saying a woman can have more husbands. That's, that was the that was the point of contention. Uh, and, 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 and how was that resolved, if at all? So the, the reason why the reason now why Tami now we are going out for this uh, national conversation is to make sure that by the time we finalize the position, remember at this stage this is not a a government position, but it's a, a, a document that has taken into consideration what are the issues that stakeholders have have raised. The constitution, uh, uh, Tami, will be the final arbiter for what happens at, at the end. So well, at if, this stage... If, if, if we look at the Constitution, Mabumtiane, uh, the Constitution talks about equality um, for all. Yes. And if we look at equality mm. for all, then uh, I guess what's good for the goose is, is good for the gander. If, if men are allowed to have uh, multiple wives, then according to the Constitution, and if we're looking at issues of equality, then the same would go for women, if that is the argument that is being put forward. But what type of impact is this likely to have on you know, society and, and, and our culture? Maybe, maybe it's how me. What happened in, in, in those engagements? The first position was not a polygamy. That was what uh, gender uh, activists were, were pushed. They said, if you men insist that there should be polygamy, then implement polygamy in all areas. If you, if you allow polygyny, where in, in that instance where a man has got more than one wife, then allow us as women in terms of the constitution to have a similar pos position, to have uh, more than uh, one um, husband. So that was the, the position that was pushed. At this stage, Tammy, I must reiterate, we are going to receive comments from various stakeholders and there are various positions that are being pushed by uh, gender activists who are saying, no, let's make sure that equality in this new marriage regime applies to everything. They are going to, they, we are really expecting very exciting submissions. Let, let, also, let me, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Mtiani, time not really on our side, but I'd love to get a comment from you, uh, Mr. Tief, uh, before we go. If you could just very briefly talk to us about the state of a polyamorous culture in South Africa. So, um, the state of polyamorous culture in South Africa is that it's a small minority of people who do live this way and who want to have multiple partners and who have long-lasting multiple relationships. Now, with this, what um, the other, <laughs> what was just brought up um, about tradition is marriage gives real legal advantages. If you can't have traditions of one culture determine that everyone in the country are legally bound by elements that's traditionally important to only some cultures in the country. If something gives you a real legal advantage, then everyone should have access to that. It's not right to say that only some people get access to those advantages because tradition, because it's our culture. And, and, and really, I think that's the point that Mr. Um, Tiani brought up as well. One of the key points that was uh, being brought up, that if you're going to allow polygamy, then also allow uh, you know, polyandry. In, in that way, the benefits that men enjoy are also benefits that women enjoy if we're looking at the issue of equality. But I thank you both so much um, for your time as well as your insight this afternoon. Uh, the Green Paper by Home Affairs is out and is available for the public as well as various stakeholders to make their input as to what they think and what they propose regarding some of the amendments